I'm going to be taking this switch and I'm gonna raise it up here. There was a molding right here and what they had to do was cut the other switch cover that was here. So in order to, this got all damaged and I gotta replace the trim coming across, but the molding does block the height of this. So since we're gonna move this, before we do anything else, the first thing we gotta do is just verify there is no power here at this switch. We don't need to light up like a bug zapper, hit us or anything like that. Best to be safe. This is the first time I'm actually gonna check. The whole time I've been working, I've just been kind of moving it, but I'm actually now gonna be disconnecting stuff over here. So I wanna make sure and verify there's no power here. Zero. All right, I'm not getting anything there. If I had a metal box, it'd be a little better for me to check the ground, but I don't. Zero, zero, okay. There's no power at this switch. So now, I'm gonna disconnect the switch. And once the switch is disconnected, I could then work on moving the box. Well, this box is gonna stay. I'm gonna use this as a junction box. I'm gonna move everything up to here. But my daughter picked out an outlet cover that would never fit if I kept it here and put the molding. What they did was they actually cut the box because you could see it was, the molding was somewhere in here and the box just didn't quite fit. Now I've done these live too, but for a video, I am not gonna show anybody that because it's always better to be safe than to find out the wrong way that there's current being drawn on the line. Forget voltage, voltage doesn't kill you. It's the current that kills you. So you, could have, you can get hit with 460. If it's got zero amps on it, you're fine. If it's got one or two amps, you're getting hurt you're gonna be wishing you did not touch that and you're getting hurt. So we got that out of our way. Now this, see it's hard for me to tell which is going where. One's going to the light and then one's gonna be the feed. And then the outlet. So, I don't know, that might be the feed. That might be the light, and the one at the bottom might be my outlet. So this is gonna stay as a junction box. Cause there's a lot going on here. But what I have to do, this is definitely the light. And both of these are hot. So one's gonna be the outlet there and the other is gonna be the power to feed here. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could cut this out, but then I would have to extend the outlet up. I don't know how much play I'd have, but I'm not gonna do that. Let's just leave this. It's gonna get covered over. I know that this is here. I'm gonna make sure that all these connections are tight. And this is gonna be high enough that we will be passed. And this is a box that's made for finished conditions. So what happens is as you screw it in and tightens, this pancakes against the back of the sheetrock to hold the box in place. I prefer metal boxes, but for this situation, these plastic boxes, work.
Now my beam is right there. I'm gonna move it over just a little, not much, but I do not have to hug the beam. Actually, look like I'm gonna. That would be straight. I'm gonna get a tape measure and measure off the wood, just to make sure that I am square. Let's see. So to here. Oh, that's perfect. I have about the same distance from my finger to the wall. So I'm just gonna cut this just how it is. I have no reason to, so I'm actually, it, even though it is a lot easier for me to just cut the whole thing. I've been using this Milwaukee foldable one for a while. It comes in handy. Hardest part at times. It's just getting the blade out. Oop. I disengaged it. I disengaged it. <laughs> This is how you change it. So whenever you wear your blade out, you could just swap it with any sawzall blade. Now there are gonna be wires here, but I've turned the breaker off. my feed so there's my feed which makes this my light the one in the back yeah so this is my light then the outlet Part of me thinks I should pull both of these up into here in case anything goes wrong. I have easier access to everything. I'll see. I don't know if I have enough play on the outlet one to bring it up. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do here, is raise these up. And I'm also gonna check power here. harder on myself but also help move these wires out of my way in case these are stopping me from putting the box here and I could probably use something like that to get the wire up higher to 
if I can get them all here, I prefer to have all my splices in this box than down here. And then these are all my grounds. I didn't get to the ground yet. I was going to pull them out. Still holding it in. Just be careful whenever you work with electricity. I've been working with electricity for many years. I'm probably too relaxed, but I'm not scared of electricity. I just respect it. I know what it could do. It's just energy. I mean, I make fire for a living, which is power and energy. Where they just twist this up, make a big knot here. Yep. Yeah, somebody just made a very big knot here, which may or may not help me. I think I should run some extension cords with some more lamps in here. One thing I gotta say is this is real world. Nothing is one, two, three. And the deadlines are almost never met. Problems keep arising. Like I wanted to have everything done, moved into this house, but no. My tub had to leak, I had to redo the plumbing. My heat had to stop, I had to fix the heat. Constant things keep throwing themselves in on the job making everything take longer than expected. I don't even live here. Freaking garage step broke on me as I was going in and out. Okay, so here's my feed. Bang. Okay, so here's my feed. My main electric line. Now my lights. Two and three, so here my lights let me straighten these out as best as I can Stabbing right into me. Okay, now I can push this back up. And I got my lights. Ah, headed to the new box. play on that but I'll make a splice from here to here on just the wire for the outlet if I rip open the sheetrock I can push a new wire through but 
I really don't want all the added work. I'm already adding enough on. Don't feel like adding a whole lot more. Where's the nails at the bottom? I don't see anything going through the box into the side. So this box, there's the nails going across. Yeah, I'm not gonna have any play on this wire, so I'm just gonna make a small splice here up into this. So this way, I could just put everything here other than this. So now we have staples on these wires. I should have cut out a little further. They wouldn't be any kind of problem, but these staples we have to get out of here. So one staple out. And the second. That one's a little tighter. Let's put this one back in the wall and move it away from me. Two by four walls, there's not a lot of space to hide it from me. working. Let's get a different pair of pliers. Nope. That's not grabbing too well. Always cut it. If all else fails, I cut it. Okay, it's coming out. Okay. Let's wiggle this free. When I get made fun of by any electrician who watches this, like you did it so wrong, how dare you? You mixed your feed and your line. You don't know what is what. Now you turn your outlet off with your switch and your light stays on all the time. What the hell are you doing? Nah. <laughs> okay. So, I should have dry fitted. Made sure this fit. But this is my feed out. We're gonna be feeding from the top. Still. See what I never understand are these things. I like the metal ones with the punch outs. I don't know why we don't have round punch outs and use conduit fittings and stuff like that. Instead, it's almost like they want me to cut this fresh and then push it through. So let's fold back my ground. Bring the wires together as if they're attached. And now we're through. And 
and we're in. I really do not like these plastic boxes. I like metal boxes better. right there. All right, so I'm gonna start fresh. Probably should have done that with the other wire too, since I don't need the full length. Where's my ground? Get over here. Middle wire. Oh, stubborn. Stubborn are you? Okay. It's all right. I look for the challenge. So hold these. Except for I probably should have jammed it through before I did that, but whatever, like I said, I'm not an electrician. And I don't like plastic boxes but they do go in easier to a finished wall let's trim that off now so i'm going to bring it in anyway Keep pulling these out of my pocket. The dikes were chopped right through them. Ah, oh, they're the ones in their own pocket. It's funny, my little girl asked me, Daddy, what did you get done in my room today? I really wanted to have it painted for her. Oh well. too far but whatever and that'll fit nicely once I tighten it up only problem is now is my outlet my outlet needs to get spliced up in here that piece of wire I kept that's a different piece but I think I'm gonna chop a new piece and just run it back and forth real fast. Put the splice on there. Bam, 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 bam. Let's take a piece of wire. But that should be more than enough.
That's gonna be very close. I'm gonna make a piece a little bit longer. Keeps it easier for me. Getting too much junk in my pocket. So if I said this wasn't long enough. I know, 12's an overkill, but whatever. That's all I got. You know what, you can never go too big with a wire. And you can always go too small, but... Let me know when a wire is way too big and won't work because it's too big. This should work. Just like this. So let me cut this. So this way this one's ready. So that's ready to be twisted together. It'll help add a little bit more current draw to it. <laughs> All right, let's get wire nuts. I would have gone with the orange, but I don't think the orange will be a good fit now that I put But I mean, maybe what I should do is just do permanent. Oh, I can't, it's solid. It's solid wire, so I can't use those. Oh well. You kinda can, but you shouldn't. So I'm not going to. Let's strip this down. Package jammed, full of tools, straight and southwest. We do not want loose connections. Okay, good. Now when I take it off, the nut will come off, but the wire will stay perfect. That'll be a nice, good connection. That I'm not worried about burying that in the wall because that's going to stay. Now, my neutrals, same thing. But I want 
the same line. I want the same action also where they start twisting together. I, mean, I could have twisted them with alignment the pliers. But if you got a good wire nut connection, you're gonna make a good connection now. That's solid, that's not gonna come apart. Now, is that hooked? That's getting a little orange one. I mean, these are just two copper connections. Keep pulling yellows out. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna put an orange there. No matter what I take out of my pocket, it's yellow, yellow. I think those yellows are for, from something different. But grounds are always needed. something that on an HVAC system I would never ever do but because I'm burying these in the wall this connection I'm actually gonna wrap this with tape usually I would never do that but I want to prevent any chance of these loosening up. Like I said, I I never do this. This is something I'm, I'm not really a fan of. But I'm also not a fan of burying connections in a wall. But I know this is not going to come apart. As this lands, bring it through. into the box. This one has to stay hot. This is not getting involved on the switch. This one's always gonna be hot.
hot one was this one. That's my hot. This one here is for the outlet. So the outlet one goes straight to the hot. in good that's in not straight though Always make adjustments on it. This is gonna go to the switch. This has to be spliced. I had to run some really sick, thick friggin' wire in here, which its only purpose is to splice into the black. Now I can use that little black one that I took off before just to kind of come off these two into the switch. All right, so now I gotta make a splice. These two, I'm gonna use this wire here to hit it, and then from here into the switch. This one's gonna go to the switch by itself. Mm, I feel I should cut that down. Makes it easier if they're the same length. Especially for the splice. And you're trying to bend them in a place here they all are the same length so they all should grab be grabbed by the wire nut and twist together nicely so that's what we're looking for it's for the wire nut to grab all three ready for the switch. Now all the whites have to come in to the same spot. So because of that I'm going to trim them all. I won't have to. That one looks like it'll reach. in more you get out <laughs> get out to the back of the room I 
if it becomes a pain, get your line and pliers and twist them together. It'll do the same thing the wire net's doing, except for it's actually probably a little better to do that. Less of a chance of them coming apart. sticking out a little either this is gonna close that up or I gotta go with a bigger wire nut have to step up to the red I might have to yeah why well, play with this right one step up I'm not talking about the giant giant one but I mean you get a little bit more with this or even these so I should also make them change. Broke. So we're making a change on that. Let's not play around. We'll keep them matching. gauge I couldn't use 14 like the whites the white and the blacks can go all the way to the back the only ones we need are these two blacks they're the only ones allowed to ride in the front even the copper ones have to go away e too bad Let's see if we can fish them through yep fit my switch in here so to the back to the back Ugh. grounds
this I should be able to use a yellow. But we will find out. It's just the ground. But even grounds could take up a lot of space in this little tiny puny box. Oh, one fell out. I guess I gotta twist them all together. And these don't even need a wire nut. I could have just left them twisted together and left one piece sticking out into my switch. The problem with that is it's a lot harder to keep the rest of them out of the way. Plastic, you have no other way to ground. I really got to get another orange one. I feel like these, this yellow one is shrunk, not as big as they once were. See, look at that. This has a bigger inside. This one compared to, yeah, this looks like it's shrunk down. I don't know. Are they trying to shrink the yellows? Hey, there's an old yellow. So much bigger. Something's going on. The wire nuts are today. Maybe they're trying to prevent hackers like me. what you expect from a yellow. Oh. Except for you expect it to catch. Hmm. I'm having technical difficulties. I think I'm just going to twist it with my pliers. Now the yellow wire is just not big enough to grab. Say that? Nope. Wasting my time. Yeah, just wasting my time here, so. I'm doing it again. I actually feel like these are the size the oranges once were. smaller. I used to be able to fit more into a yellow wire nut. Okay, grounded. 
grounds are critical. are together. Tuck it in a spot that I can still hopefully fit this switch with all this crap packed in to here. Now the switch. I put somewhere. It's in one of my pockets there. Hopefully it fits though. Properly grounded. Now, power doesn't really matter. There may be a line load spot in the back, but it makes no difference because it's just going to complete your circuit. Somebody may say, Oh no, it really matters. How dare you put it in the wrong spot? But seriously, it's just completing the circuit. That's it. So the strippers here. Boom. I'm a little disorganized, I feel, right now. Now, put it right about here. screwdriver and you could just tuck them right into the back of these and when you tighten them down they grip and hold using this more than I do like looping them. Looping them, they fall out sometimes. Now the only downfall, I think I lost <laughs> the two screws, which I just gotta locate. But then that's gonna be right there. 
just going to locate those screws fast. So I found some screws. I even found the little washers that hold them in place. Which come in handy. This way when you want to take it out. It holds the screw in. Some guys remove them. But since it was on the floor with it. Figured why not. Just do the whole thing. All right, so they're behind it. Now let's put this in. Then I'm gonna put a piece of tape over it so I don't paint it. Part of me was thinking I shouldn't even put it on the wall yet. I should pull it off paint, but another part of me is like, just put it on, put some tape over it. If I get a little paint on the box, not the end of the world. Off. Um, okay, I'm making sure I put it in the correct direction. Now I need to energize it. Make sure that everything works. I doubt that the wrong wire got hooked up. crank all the way so this way if I have to make little adjustments I can I'll tighten it up after I know that it's the final spot which it should be fine I'm gonna go throw the power on all right so first thing we're gonna check the outlet for voltage if we check this screw we got 120 good so I have power at my outlet Right now that's off. We're going to check up here for power. We should have nothing. Zero. What I probably should do is turn the power off. Then we'll hear it beep. Okay. Power works. Off, off, good. Well, there you go. I lifted this up just a little bit, a few inches. I raised the electrical box. I might have been able to chop this down a little bit, but you know what? And it probably would have saved me a lot of work to go down a little, but I raised it up, it's fine. Till next time, now I'm going to paint the crowns, paint the walls, put the wall back on after I paint the wall so I don't have to worry about getting paint on this stuff over here. And then on the next project, I'm out. Peace.